All right, so working through the quiz is for the, your third test, which is over linear 1.4 through 6. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to find the answers of each of these. I'm going to be showing work, so you need to be copying down everything that I'm doing so that we can get full credit with your teacher. So number one, how would I fix the trend line to better fit the data? Trend lines need to be going through the middle of the dots. Okay, so one of the easiest things to look at is the y-intercept. It was crossing somewhere down here. Now it's crossing up here. So I'm increasing the y-intercept. So you could automatically eliminate B and D. Okay, and then the slope, it is less slanted or flatter, which means you decrease the slope. Okay, moving on to number two. The following scatter plot shows Pam's training as she prepares to run a seven mile race at the end of the month. Which of the following would be a reasonable approximation of the length of time it would take for her to run six miles? So I'm going to graph each of these or plot each of these points and see which one is the most reasonable. Okay, so after six miles right here, 50. 50 would be right here. That seems a little low. Okay, 45, that's even lower. 80, that's way off the graph up here, or 60. So 60 is right there in the middle. So that is going to be the most reasonable. Okay, three. If Gold's Gym is looking to buy 10 TVs, how much will each one cost? So we're going from 10 TVs, okay, and we're going to make the approximation. So 400. So at 10, 400 would be right here. That's way low, okay. 1250. Okay, that may work. Not too far off, okay. 750. Still too low. So these two I know are too low. Okay, 1000. Okay, that one's right there in the middle of the data. If I was to draw a trend line, I would say it'd go right through there, right there at that 1000. Okay, four. Determine the correlation coefficient and decide whether it's weak, moderate, or strong. The correlation coefficient, this is your R value on the calculator. So if you don't remember your steps, you're going to click second, zero, go to diagnostics on. Okay, so I'm going to go on my calculator, second, zero, all the way down to diagnostics on. Enter, enter, okay. Then to, to enter our points, we click stat, enter, and we're going to type in our points. So we've got 61, 95, 44, 93, 63, 80, 62, 95, 65, 88. Y values, we've got 35, 55, 55. 50, 15, 34, 16, 50, 7, 38. Stat, right, 4. So my R value, if I finish my steps, I did stat, enter, and then I did stat, right, 4. So my R value is 0.895. So based off that R value, it would be this 0.9. And that is really close to 1, so that is strong. And is that positive or negative? Just throwing that out there. That is positive. Okay, we've got another correlation coefficient. So this is our R value. So stat, enter. If you want to clear your points, if you go up to the top, click clear and go down, it'll clear it out. Clear, go down, clear it out. All right, so we've got 9, 13, 21, 30, 31, 
32, 34. We've got 260, 320, 420, 530, 560, 580, 590. Then we click stat, write 4, and my R value is 0.99835 which is D. Guys, these are super close, so you've got to make sure that you're using your numbers exactly so you know where you're supposed to go. Okay, describe the relationship between the variables. So if I was to draw a trend line, I'd say it'd be going through there. So this is negative, so it's not B or A. And those dots are really spread out, so that's going to be weak. The more spread out the dots are, the weaker it is. Whereas in 7, so if I drew my trend line, okay, this one is positive. And this time the dots are super close, so this is a strong positive. Okay, 8, what is the line of best fit? So I'm going to enter these points in. Stat, enter. You can clear it out. Okay, so we've got 2, 5, 10, 15, 20. Then we've got 1, 25, 21, 32, 41. Stat, write 4. So we get 1.82 as our A. B is 5.024, so that should be the X, so it's right here at C. Okay, we're doing the line of best fit again, so we just like doing this. We're practicing, so stat, edit, clear, clear, okay, so we've got 24, 22, 19, 23, 20, 162, 165, 173, 146. Stat, write 4. So A is 5.57. B is 25.05. <sighs> so you know it's not this one or this one. And it is a positive 25.05, so it is B. There we go. Okay. As incidence of texting increase, the number of car crashes increase. So anytime you're talking about causation, ask yourself, does it have to happen? Okay. So as in if you are texting, do you have to get in a car crash? No. So this is simply a correlation. Texting does not always cause car crashes. Yes, it can. But just because you're texting, you do not have to have a car crash. So B, this is simply a correlation. Okay, so which of these shows a causation? Which one does have to happen? An individual's decision to work in construction and his diagnosis of skin cancer. If you work in construction, do you have to get skin cancer? No. Okay, child's weight increases and so does her vocabulary. No. Temperature, a decrease in temperature and the increase in attendance at an ice skating rink. No, just because it gets hotter doesn't mean you have to attend an ice skating rink. Number of minutes spent exercising and the amount of calories burned. The more you exercise, you have to burn more calories. That is true. Okay, 
Troy graphed the line of the equation, f of x equals 5x plus 2. Sarah graphed the line of the equation, g of x equals 5x minus 2, on the same coordinate plane. Which of the following statements best describes the line that Sarah graphed second? So which of the ones best fits this? Okay. The 5x is the same. It's this y-intercept that's different. So m is what affects the steepness, whereas b, or the y-intercept, affects up and down shifts. So we could know just off the bat that it's not changing the steepness, so it wouldn't be a or d. And to go from here to here, I'm going down, so it would be a vertical shift down C. Now, I would also recommend plugging these in your calculator. So on your test, check. We've got 5x plus 2, and then we've got 5x minus 2. Let's just look at our graph. So there's the original. There's the new one. It's the same steepness. It just moved down. So that is correct. Okay, here. Compare the graphs of y equals 3 fourths x minus 2 and 3 fourths x plus 4. So I'm going to plug them in my calculator. 3 fourths x minus 2 and then 3 fourths parentheses x plus 4 parentheses minus 2. So I've got them both entered in. And let's look at them. So there's the original. There's the new one. So it shifted up, okay? The lines have the same y-intercept. Here's a y-intercept, here's a y-intercept. No. Okay, the lines are equally steep. Yeah, those are parallel. Those are just as steep. Okay, the lines intersect at 0, negative 2. No, there's no intersection at all because those two lines are parallel. So this one we know is not true because they're parallel. Okay, and they have the same x-intercept. Here's an x-intercept, here's an x-intercept. Which, just as a reminder, x-intercept, another name is 0. So do those have the same 0? No, they do not. So the answer is B. Okay, here, 2 thirds x plus 7. Which one shows you going left? 3. If it's going left or right, it's going to have to affect the x. And it's the opposite of what you think. So to go left, you add 3. So I'm going to take this, and inside that parentheses, I am adding 3. So the 2 thirds stays the same. Okay, all of those got that. And 7 plus 3 is 10. So I think it's going to be this one. I am going to check to see if that made it go left. So we had 2 thirds parentheses x plus 7. And now I've got 2 thirds x plus 10. So guys, check yourself. You've got a calculator. It takes two seconds to plug in the equations. So we want to see which one makes it go left three. So there's the original, and I want to see it go left. Did I go the wrong way? Left is plus. Oh, that is left. I don't know my directions. That's right. That's left. Duh. So, yes, that did go left three. So, that's what I wanted. I know the math better than directions. <laughs> okay. 15. Sarah graphed the function 3x minus 12. So, which one shows a vertical stretch? So, if it's a stretch, this means the m is increasing. Our m needs to get better, bigger. So, that means the 3 is what's changing. These have the same slope, so it can't be that one. 6, yes, that is bigger, whereas 1, no, that is smaller, so B. And let's just check. Think about it. If you are stretching vertically, so up and down, if you took your math teacher and you stretched them out and made them taller, would it get skinnier or would it get fatter? It gets skinnier. So let's plug it in. 3x minus 12, and let's see, 6x minus 12. So th there's the original, and we want it to get skinnier. Yep. There it is. Beautiful.
All right, how are the graphs of f of x and g of x related if g of x is f of x plus 2? Okay, so that means g, what does x plus 2 do? That makes it go, it's in the parentheses, so we know it's going right or left. And this is going to be left 2. So here's f of x. I'm just going to draw a picture so you can see. There's f of x, and then g of x came, and it went left 2. So say this was the y-intercept, I went 1, 2. Okay, so the graph of g of x is shifted 2 units to the left of the graph of x, f of x. That is correct. No two units down. No, we're not affecting that y. We're affecting the x, so it's not up or down. And it wouldn't be to the right. It's the opposite of what you think when it's in the parentheses. Okay, room car shop charges an hourly labor fee plus the cost of parts to fix a vehicle. Johnny's equation is y equals 65x plus 110. Henry goes to the same shop and his equation is 65x plus 80. So the, this or the m, the slope, is staying the same. It's this y-intercept is decreasing, okay? So it's not the per or the each or the, what are some other names for slope? We've got per, we've got each. It's your rate of change, right? That part is not changing. So we should automatically eliminate anything that has a rate because that's not changing. And then here, the cost of the parts was more expensive or the cost of the parts was less expensive. If it went down, it was less expensive. This was the rate. So this would be like 65 per hour plus $80 for parts. 65 per hours plus 110 for parts. So the amount of parts went down. Remember my last page? You're just flying by. Okay, here. Yum Yum Ice Cream Parlor charges $4 for the ice cream plus 75 cents per topping. Okay, so I'm going to write an equation. Y equals, we've got $4 for the ice cream plus .75 per topping. On Wednesday nights, okay, on Wednesday nights, there's a special that charges $1 for the ice cream plus 75 cents per topping. Which statement best describes the change? You can't even see my equations, I apologize. So there's my equations. Four plus 75 per, one plus 75 per. Anytime you see per, each, or every, that is the slope, okay? So which part is changing? The slope is not, slope stayed the same. So if we had each, per, every, rate of change, any of those we can eliminate because that's not changing. So each topping will increase, nope. Each topping will decrease, no. Okay, the y-intercept is increased by three or the, which means the total amount charged will increase. If it's a sale, do you really think it's gonna be increasing? Just asking. No, to go from four to one, the total amount charged will decrease. That is your answer. All right, so here, which sequence has a common difference? This is your D value, or it's also the change, okay, of seven. So from here to here, this is plus nine. I'm gonna use your positive numbers. You can use any of the numbers you want. Here to here is plus eight. 2 to 9, that is 7. Uh, none of these are pretty. This is minus 8. If you don't know, you can take y2 minus y1 to find that change. y2 minus y1. So I could take negative 73 minus negative 65, negative 8. Good. 9 minus 2, 7. Good. This one, 15 minus 7, 
8. Good. 12 minus 3. 9. Good. So I had all the right rate of change. Which one has a D of 7? This one right here. Okay, which sentence best describes the sequence? So it is starting at 25, and to get to the next term, I am subtracting 4. So each term is 25 more. No, 25 is the start. Each term is 4 more. If it's subtracting, is it going to be 4 more? No. Each term is 4 less, yes, that's subtracting 4, than the term before it, starting with the number 25. That's your answer. What is the rule for the arithmetic sequence whose first term is 3, so this is your T1, and the common difference is 2? That's your D. So we've got our formula. All right, down here. T sub n equals T1 plus D times n minus 1. Okay, what I tell my kids is any time you see that D, that's what has to be next to the n minus 1. So which one does not have D next to N minus 1? So which one doesn't have 2 next to N minus 1? B and D. And then do we ever have a plus 1? No, I don't even know what that crap is. Get rid of that one. So it has to be A. I like to write it. It starts at 3, and then each time it's adding 2 times N minus 1. And just like the slope, guys, could I write 2X plus 3? and rearrange it to 3 plus 2x. Yes, those are the same thing, as long as your 2 stays next to the variable. So it's the same thing here, as long as the 2 is next to the variable. 2 is next to the variable, we're all good. Okay, for 22, let's write our rule. Tn equals, it starts at 5. Each time I am adding 7 times n minus 1. And they want us to find the 20th. Okay, yes, they're using an a instead of t. It is the same thing. So I'm going to plug this in my calculator. 5 plus 7, parentheses, x minus 1. And I am looking for the 20th term. 138. Okay, 23. This is the formula. Okay, so let's plug in our formula. Negative 4, parentheses, x minus 1, plus 7. And they want us to find the 27th term. Negative 97. There it is. If you don't have a calculator at home, all we're doing is we are subbing this in for n. So negative 4, this is 27 minus 1 plus 7. So negative 4 times 26 plus 7. So negative 4 times 26 plus 7. Negative 97. Same thing for up here. It's wanting the 20th term, so you're doing 5 plus 7 times 20 minus 1, which is 5 plus 7 times 19, which would get you 138. Slope. Slope is delta y over delta x, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So to get from here to here, minus 3, here to here, it's plus 1. The y goes on top. Y aren't you over your x? Negative 3 over 1. That is your slope. Don't forget how to find slope, guys. That's like the most important thing ever. All right, 25. Find the 32nd term. So they're like wanting us to find t sub 35. So to write my equation, it starts at 9. To get to the next term, it's minus 5 n minus 1. Okay, so I'm going to do this with my hand instead of with the calculator. So 9 minus 5, I'm plugging in 35, because that's the one I want to find. So 9 minus 5 times 34. So 5 times 
34, so 9 minus 170 equals negative 160. Why is that not an answer choice? 9 minus 5 and minus, oh, I found the 35th. I'm done. I need the 32nd. So this would be 31. 5 times 31. I apologize, guys. So this is 155. So 9 minus 155 is negative 1. Is it 46? Yep. Negative 146. There's your answer. So make sure you're plugging the correct number in. So I'm plugging in 32 because it wants the 32nd term. I simplified. So 32 minus 1 is 31. That equals 155. 9 minus 155 is negative 146. And that is your review. If you have any questions, be sure to ask your teacher, and you will turn that sheet with work in as well as doing your quizzes. Have a good day.